So hello again. I I had to start a new uh, a new stream because uh, for whatever reason the old one completely uh, yeah all of a sudden interrupted. I have no idea why. Um, I hope that you're still able to see this. Hello. I will type this in. And uh, okay, um, sorry about this, and I hope that uh, some of you are able to join in um, and that you are able to find uh, this link. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just going to continue right now as, as normal and uh, yeah, somebody found it again. Okay, good. Um, yeah, this is basically the second part because the previous one for whatever reason uh, got interrupted and I hope that uh, <laughs> my viewers from the previous one are able to fi find the link. Um, we're going to um, yeah, post the link uh, into uh, also the, the, the first part here. Sorry about this. I don't know what happened. It happened happened never before um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get started okay <laughs> because I'd like uh, to to um, to to kind of show you what's uh, what's going on here maybe it will take uh, maybe it will take a couple of, uh, of minutes until um, yeah some people are going to join again um, sorry about this again but I don't know what happened um, all of a sudden it was interrupted um, and uh, I all of a sudden realized that I was basically talking and nobody was able to to uh, to see me <laughs> for whatever reason let's let's continue okay so um, what I've got here is, is I've, um, here I've got several um, uh, samples uh, some of them are pond water samples some of the samples I've prepared um, and I would like to simply demonstrate to you how to separate this and then we're, of course we're going to put it under the microscope okay um, first of all rule number one rule number one um, there is no point in trying to centrifuge something if you're not able if it's clear so if it's completely clear, then chances are pretty good you're not going to find anything also under the centrifuge, okay? So that's the first thing. So it's kind of cloudy as you can see here. And so let's uh, try this out. I have not tried this myself yet, this specimen here. Um, I just prepared it uh, before the live stream. And the first thing that we have to do is, is we have to make sure that the tubes that I'm using for centrifuging, that they're balanced. Okay, so what I've got here is, is I've got here a, um, a scale and now I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to um, yeah show you um, again the desk view here, okay? Um, and uh, I need to make sure that um, the balance and the specimen that they basically have uh, have the same um, you know, the same mass. It's really important because otherwise the centrifuge is going to start to, uh, to vibrate too much. So what I'm going to do first is is I'm going to use a pipette. I've got a few disposable pipettes here. And I'm going to use a pipette, and I'm going to simply fill up the tube um, with uh, some, um, yeah, of the, um, yeah, of the suspension that I have here. Okay. Um, and uh, usually, what I do is, is I simply place the tube here into uh, another little jar, and then let's see yeah, if we're able um, to fill it up here. And uh, what you can, of course, do is, is you can take uh, several. Um, of these uh, yeah, different sam uh, samples and then balance them against each other. Of course, it, you don't always have to balance it with water, but simply to save a little bit of, of, of time, you can um, now also add another uh, sample here. So this one is number one, I go um, on off. So I go to the, yeah, to zero now. So I now I have to make sure that the other one over here, the sample also has the same mass. So I have to um, also go to zero right now. And I'm going to take now the second sample. Okay, so I'm going to take an, uh, another fresh disposable pipette. Um, normally I reuse the pipettes, of course, uh, but uh, yeah, I'll rinse them out later. And uh, I have to now add uh, exactly the same amount. I don't know if you're able to read uh, the if you're able to read the value here. It's a little bit overexposed here. Okay. Yep, people are now joining in. If you've just uh, found uh, this second part. Apologies, but for whatever reason, um, the first one um, automatically interrupted. I did not interrupt it myself. All of a sudden, I just got the message that the live stream stopped, and I don't know why. Um, and uh, then I had some problems restarting it. And I just hope that uh, yeah, you were able to to find uh, that you were able to find it again. Okay. So um, basically, these are the first two, and uh, they are they now have exactly uh, the same uh, the same mass. Okay, um, because of the different density of the substances, uh, I don't go by volume but by mass. And then um, now I'm going to switch over again to the wide view. Okay, and now I'm going to remove those other I'm going to remove those other 
cubes here and I put them in here okay I'm across each other yeah so that's basically I'm going to show you again how this looks like the desk view okay yeah again <laughs> it's a little bit yeah so this is how it looks like yeah. here are the two tubes okay um in here uh, these are also yeah kind of these are not test tubes but these are basically just the holders where you can place it you can uh, then put a lid on top okay and then um, I'm going to give it a spin uh, the question is how long well a couple of minutes uh, should be fine and I'm not going to use the timer um, I'm just going to uh, turn it up uh, slowly and then I'm going to spin it for a couple of minutes and it's going to be um, a little bit noisy okay um, yeah so uh, but uh, again here people joined in I hope uh, that uh, um, yeah after the little mishap that uh, people found it again so but I'm going to do now the following I'm going to start spinning it okay there's now some vibration so it's some resonance so maybe three or four or five maybe three or four or five minutes I'm still waiting. I don't know if you're able to hear me when I say something or whether the noise of the centrifuge not is not too loud. Okay. So, just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. I don't know if you're able. Oh, okay. Some some of you have muted it because of the noise. Okay. Okay, you are able to hear me. So I'm going to turn it down now. Okay. So um, yeah, uh, I'm 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 relieved that um, many of you, some of you, have found your way back into the new <laughs> into the new stream here after the previous one crashed for whatever reason. Um, yeah, so let's quickly have a look um, uh, if actually if it actually worked, okay? And indeed, um, I don't know if you if I have to switch over to the desk view again, okay? I don't know if you're able to see this properly. I have to hold this. Where is the where is the uh, great desk view? And uh, today we have the day of uh, the problem with uh, the with technology because all of a sudden the camera started to give out here. That's also an interesting one just uh, worked previously and all of a sudden the camera went out hmm, strange um, so let's try it again if not then I'm just going to show you here see it, uh, it's yeah here we go I actually okay yeah if you're able to see maybe there's this white thing here on the bottom okay it's called the pellet okay let's put this over here and over here wow that's even bigger look at this it's huge here okay 
So um, what I have to do now is I have to remove the top liquid and uh, then I can resuspend uh, this one on, on the bottom and then we can have a look at it what it is. Okay, so uh, generally uh, we have to be very careful when removing the top liquid because you do not want to disturb or resuspend the pellet too, too quickly. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to therefore uh, uh, take a pipette and I have over here a, um, yeah, a trash container or trash jar so to say <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to simply put all of the liquid in here. So um, you basically pretty self-explanatory really all, all you do is, is you kind of uh, use the pipette because if you pour it out then there's the danger that you also remove the pellet okay so let's quickly do that so a little bit of liquid is fine because we do need a little bit of liquid to resuspend the pellet Okay, and maybe I can just show it to you by um, by going again over to the desk view, and maybe I can refocus this a little bit here. Uh, it's too blurry. Uh, that's that's a bit better. Yeah, and when you turn it, then you're able to see here this this is pellet, yeah, the solid material. So this the other one over here also has a pellet, yeah, which uh, yeah, it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. So. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to rinse uh, this pipette again. And uh, now I'm going to carefully remove uh, this one here as well. Sometimes uh, what you can do is, is uh, you can actually resuspend the pellet again in a lot of water and then re uh, centrifuge it again because this washes um, the whatever you've got in there so it's kind of this way you can remove any impurities yeah and sometimes you actually get a better um, yeah better specimen so a little bit more maybe okay so um, next thing is the following um, I would like to resuspend it and um, you do that by tapping it you, know, some, you can of course also use a pipette to do that uh, but tapping uh, generally works um, and over here the second one yeah this is a huge pellet here I'm also going to tap it. I have to be honest with you now. These are uh, specimens that I've prepared. Yeah, um, so simply to show you that uh, there is a large pellet. Um, because the other specimens with the water samples, they might not have uh, as large of a pellet. So, uh, and now, um, yeah, basically the rest is, is quite easy. You take a, a, a slide. So I'm going to get down here again. Ah, okay. Uh, and now I even know what the problem is, why the camera always gives out. Um, I thought I knew. Oh, again, it's gone. Lots of technical issues and glitches today. Just a second. Hmm, strange. Okay, let's uh, let's stay here then. Um, okay, so I'm going to take a small sample. I put it on my microscope slide. You still should be able to see it a little bit. Maybe I have to put it a little bit here. Yeah, and uh, then uh, the cover glass uh, goes on top. So let me put this away again. And uh, the cover glasses are here. And uh, yeah, let's put it under the microscope. And uh, let's turn this up. Ah, at least this one works. <laughs> so let's have a look. And what in the world is this? It's uh, quite dense. And uh, well, these are the yeast cells that are prepared. Okay, so let's uh, have a look here. Very dense and uh, maybe even a little bit too dense in my view. But let's go up. This is now 60 times, yeah, and uh, these are now um, individual yeast cells that have uh, concentrated um, out of a yeast uh, suspension. Okay, yeah. So that is basically <laughs> demonstration number one. So if you actually, uh, uh, yeah, 
want to try this out uh, you can also make your own centrifuge I've also made some videos by using an electrical for example an electrical drill and you mount a disc on the electrical drill and you can also mount some t uh, test tubes there and then you can also spin it it's a little dangerous of course because um, you've got the things rotating um, but it's possible as well yeah and uh, those cells are fairly large and therefore they can be uh, separated quite easily okay um, yeah so uh, okay so I'm quickly going through the, yeah. So there's a question here. I heard that sometimes microorganisms can break up because the speed of the centrifuge is too high. That's correct. The g-forces can be quite high. And I would say probably not with a centrifuge like this one over here, but uh, with an ultra centrifuge that spins very quickly, I can imagine quite well possible that the cells are able to break up, okay? Um, if it's disposable, could we make two pinholes above the pellet to let the liquid out? Well, um, that might be possible. So I guess the question is, is, um, is it possible to kind of make a, 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 a hole over here um, above the pellet, maybe using a hot needle or something like that. So, um, and then uh, basically the, yeah, the water will run out uh, the liquid will run out and then the pellet is uh, left over. I'm sure, it, I think it might be possible, but generally using a pipette works fine. So. Um, I think it's uh, more complicated by actually making whole would be probably more complicated than necessary. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can't see the video. Well, it's not clear. I think uh, that's another issue. Okay. So I hope that you're able to see it uh, properly. Okay. So what you're seeing right now is the microscope view. Okay. And uh, I'm going to switch. Yeah change this around a little bit here and then what you're able to see is uh, the individual yeast cells and if you add a little bit of sugar then you might also be able to see that some of the yeast cells um, are dividing okay so let me quickly check again if the desk view works no, still doesn't work there is still an issue with my camera I think uh, it started to switch off when I turned on the light I think there seems to be some uh, some power supply problem um, with the uh, yeah with the camera here but uh, I hope that Otherwise, I'll just stay here with a wide, uh, wide angle view. So let's uh, now have a look at the other pellet as well. Okay, so this was the first one. Now, what about the second one here? This pellet is a little bit, uh, yeah, smaller. And uh, yeah, I would like to also put this here under the microscope. Where is my, where my slides? They're here. And uh, yeah, you know what I'm gonna try now? I'm going to try it the very, very unprofessional way simply by carefully pouring out a little droplet. Yep, and here it is. Um, because if there is too much of this liquid, then I can still soak it up quite easily with some tissue paper. This is, I think, something that I'm going to do. Okay, so is this actually only one cover glass here? Let me see. Sometimes the cover glasses, they like to stick together so much that they cannot be separated quite easily. And I think I do have a little bit too much liquid, but that's fine because you always can remove any excess uh, with uh, some tissue paper. Okay. I think uh, just uh, for your information, I've uh, connected now. There are two uh, webcams on top of my monitor, two. Then there's a camera over here on my stereo uh, microscope, three. Then there is a camera over here on my compound microscope four. Then there is a camera for, um, yeah, for the desk uh, five. And then there's a camera for the stage. So I've got six cameras connected here. And I think that this might occasionally overload <laughs> the USB port of my computer um, because there is simply too much data transfer. And sometimes the cameras switch off. And I think this is actually what happened now with my desk camera. It simply switched off because the USB uh, USB port uh, was a little bit overloaded. So, uh, but uh, this this one hopefully should work again. It's a little bit too bright, okay? So let's go down and uh, yeah, what do we have here? It's also very, very dense. Okay, it's also very, very dense. And of course, uh, many of you might actually recognize what this is. Yeah. Never seen it in such density before. Yeah. Who could, uh, who, who would guess? Yeah, this is of course a very starch grains, of course. Yes, correct. So I just also want to quickly tell you how I've uh, actually um, isolated those. Um, 
what I've done is I've, I cut uh, potatoes into small pieces. Yeah, I cut the potatoes into small pieces and uh, put them in here with a little bit of water and rinsed it. And then I took the potatoes out again. That's it. Yeah, and then I centrifuged it. And this has the advantage that um, essentially you were this way you kind of remove all of the other cell parts because what I've done in the past always is if I always cut open a potato and scratched the surface of the potato um, to get the starch grains out you can do that you can see them obviously this way but the problem is is that uh, you also have a lot of cellular stuff um, in on this uh, sample but by kind of uh, rinsing it in water and then centrifuging it and concentrating it um, yeah, you basically get it uh, in a very high density but strictly speaking I have to be honest with you I'm just realizing you don't even need to centrifuge it because if you wait long enough then you can actually see the starch grains collect on the bottom of, on, of the glass as well but it's much faster if you centrifuge it okay so there's a little bit the the the, the, the thing here um, yeah and I see that uh, I can yeah, I'm already, um, yeah, I think I have to kind of <laughs> tweak the setup a little bit of the system here because I think the USB is a little bit of a problem here. There's another question which I overlooked. Based on your own experience and your likes, what is it better between a monocular microscope or binocular microscope? Um, well, I mean, um, l let's, let me interpret the question. A binocular microscope allows you to look through the microscope with both eyepieces and a monocular one only with one eyepiece. Yeah? So a binocular one, of course, is always more convenient to use. However, in some circumstances, like for example in school and in education, um, we like to use monocular microscopes because they are cheaper, obviously, um, they are lighter, and um, many students have a problem anyway looking through the microscope with both eyes and they will end up closing one eye anyway. So if you want to have portability and ease and maybe even ease of use, then sometimes a monocular microscope is, is to be preferred, especially for beginners. Um, however, uh, if you want to sit a long time behind the microscope, then always use a binocular one. Um, however, I would say that uh, be aware that uh, there is a, yeah, Stereo microscopes are always binocular, however, okay? So stereo microscopes, they um, are those that uh, allow you to look at objects that are opaque, okay? Um, what samples are good for oil immersion uh, microscopy? All of those samples which are very thin, extremely important. Uh, for high magnification, so anything 60 times and higher with the objective, uh, where the working distance is so small, you need to have very thin specimens. Okay, although the depth of field is so low, right? So if you have, a, if it's too thick, then it's going to go out of focus very quickly. Yeah. So um, I would say single-celled algae, of course, or oil immersion. Then, of course, bacteria, um, anything that's maybe around a cell thick. Okay, um, a maximum one cell layer thick is, is suitable for oil immersion. Yeah. Um, yeah, the question about pollen analysis, yes, of course, um, you can do this. You have to get the pollen. Um, if you want to separate the pollen, you have to basically uh, get the pollen into solution, for example, by collecting maybe some dust somewhere where there's pollen on it, you, uh, and then you can centrifuge it as well. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, those starch grains look almost crystal-like. Well, uh, got to be honest with you, they are crystals. <laughs> yes, those starch grains, in, when they're not boiled, they actually are crystalline in structure. This is also the reason why um, starch grains, uh, when they are um, yeah, not boiled, yeah, while they are polarizing. So for example, if you can see this a little bit, um, yeah, then if I change the polarization around, yeah, then the, the colors change. Yeah? This, is, this is because uh, they are crystalline indeed. Yeah? Uh, and only when you, that's why raw potatoes you cannot digest well because uh, we are not able to digest the starch, but as soon as you boil it, then the starch bec becomes amorphous um, and uh, much more easily digestible. Okay, so just uh, just for your uh, yeah, information. So you know what? Um, before I'm, I'm getting lost again in other things, um, let's move on. And I would like to put again uh, specimens under the microscope. I've got uh, yeah yeast and, and the starch grains. We can look at them later again if you want to. Okay, let, let me put the slides somewhere where I can find them again. And um, I have a very boring sample. I'm going to show you this. It is um, actually something which I considered very disappointing. And I'm going to show it to you in any case, okay? So this is um, a sample that has been standing now on my window for a couple of months. So of course, water was evaporating, no problem. I've always added a little bit more water. And uh, normally when you let water stand like this, uh, many solid 
particles will settle down to the bottom and this is also something that has happened here that there is some solid stuff here yeah but there was also lots there was um, there were many things also in suspension which did not settle down and i said wow that's great because that is now an ideal specimen for centrifuge because i would like to know what's swimming around here um, so i'm going to centrifuge this uh, but do not have very high expectations okay so it's not going to look very exciting i just want to say right um, particles that are very small um, they are generally like to stay suspended um, I think this is not only a question of density, uh, but I think it's also a question of maybe of Brownian motion because um, they are kind of always kept in suspension by the movement of the of the particles. Yeah, but what I'm going to do in any case, I'm just going to centrifuge this now. Okay, I'm going to centrifuge this, and I'm going to also put another sample. Yeah, in parallel, this one over here. Nah, you know what? I don't know. I have to somehow remember which one's which. But there is, um, yeah, that's another sample here, which kind of looks similar, but that's actually quite different. Okay, so let's do this uh, first. Um, I'm going to again. Um, I need to again balance everything. It's really important because if you don't balance the whole thing, then the, um, it's going to start to vibrate a lot, and this might actually da damage uh, the motor. And uh, it's kind of scary. I mean, I once uh, had this happen. It was vibrating very badly, and uh, not not so nice. Huh? So um, how am I going to do that? I need a pipette again. Yeah, so I'm going to use this uh, pipette and I'm going to uh, always, now I've got another one over here which is already clean. Yeah, so I'm going to rinse this here. It doesn't have to be sterile. Okay. And I'm going to now use this uh, sample here again. Uh, please uh, don't be disappointed. Yeah, it's a pretty boring one. Okay. Um, but uh, I just want to demonstrate it to you uh, as well. I have to use a little bit more of uh, this here because um, the, the concentration is not so high. Okay, the concentration is not quite as high and therefore I have to use a little bit more. So I'm almost going to fill it up all the way. So I press uh, Terra. So I have to go back to zero again with the new tube. Okay, so this is basically now zero and I just put it in already and then I'm going to take another tube here. Yeah, a, not, not this one here. I want to have a, uh, this one was the counterbalance. And uh, yeah, I still need to add 2.85 grams. So I'm just going to use this water bottle here. 2.8, so up a little too much. 0 0.36 grams too much. Just going to pour a little bit out here. Don't forget uh, that um, at high speeds, even very small differences in mass can actually create a, a large force difference. Yeah, 0, 0.00. So I'm back, um, yeah. And now I'm going to put it in here again, okay. So I've got this uh, yeah, water sample, which is a little bit green, greenish, but actually not very much. And uh, yeah, we, we, I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, we're able to see something. Well, at least uh, I tried it out before already and we are able to see something, but uh, yeah, again, not something very exciting, but still, I think, important to demonstrate. Okay. So, do you have the chance to buy protozoa cultures in Austria? I am aware they're available in some countries. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you're able to hear me, the answer is yes, you can buy protozoa over mail order because they are used by people who have aquariums as fish food. And uh, yeah, I actually also bought some protozoa before. So, I don't know the shop where I bought it, uh, but I, uh, we bought some uh, protozoa and I think also some, uh, yeah, and uh, the, the Pyramecia as a matter of fact. And uh, they arrived um, after a couple of days in a little, uh, yeah, plastic bag. Yeah. It's also possible to buy Daphnia, which are water fleas. Um, so I would say if you need uh, these things, then try to go to a 
shop uh, that uh, sells um, aquarium and fish food. So um, yeah, there are uh, some, some shops around and they might actually have those. Um, however, I also have to say that uh, finding protozoa and, and growing protozoa is so easy that it might not even be necessary to buy it. But uh, yeah, it's still a possibility. I don't know how long I have to spin it. Um, it's sometimes it's not really a question of time, but also a rather a question of speed. I'm going now, I'm at not the maximum speed. I'm not using the timer because, um, yeah, it's an analog timer. I turn it and it simply starts ticking because there's some kind of a clockwork, mechanical clockwork in there, and it keep, keeps on ticking until, uh, <laughs> until it's back to zero again. So it can be a little bit annoying as well. What kind of measuring scale do you use? Uh, the one from Amazon. Okay, I, I'm using this one over here. It goes all the way to a hundredth of a gram. One hundredth of a gram. Yeah. I bought, I think it was around, um, I think it was 15 euros or so on Amazon. And it's sold on the different, the same one is sold on the different brand names. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that, that's how it looks like. I'm quite sure that there are um, others also available. You can uh, the battery box is here in the back. The maximum RPM. You know what? I'm just gonna stop now. Then it starts to vibrate again a little bit. I don't know what the maximum RPM is. It might say something here. Well, actually, does it say say it here? Maximum f speed 4,000 rotations per minute, it says here. 1,790 G and 620 millimeter tubes, milliliter tubes. Yeah, so it's uh, 1,790 times G maximum RCF, it says here, and the speed 4,000 rotations per minute. So now, now, I'm, now I'm really excited. I mean, it did work before when I tried it. And wow, tiny pellet, tiny. Uh, you're, you're probably not even able to see it, okay? There is a tiny, tiny pe pellet yeah, here. So I have to be really careful here. And the other one here, that is the counterbalance, the counterweight. So what I'm gonna do now, I have to yeah, take a pipette and uh, carefully decant the, the top again, the top liquid, yeah? And uh, without actually destroying the pellet. This is going to be a challenge. So what I usually do is, is always turn it like this. The pellet is at the top. And uh, then I will always take uh, the sample also from, from, from the bottom. Okay. So let's try that. Now you, now you also know probably why I uh, filled the tube all the way to the top because the pellet itself is so small. So let's See if this works. More of this away. Yeah, a tiny drop is now still here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try this now to resuspend this. Sometimes uh, this is enough by tapping it. Sometimes not. Yeah, this might actually work. Um, there's a question. I'm a little surprised that you don't screw the sample tubes with a lid. It's probably possible without it. Yes, uh, it's possible without. Um, in, the, in the lab at university, we always left it open. Yeah. Uh, the reason is, is because um, the force pulls it uh, yeah, um, outwards. Yeah. I think what is important, however, um, and that actually is not a problem, is is uh, that the, um, the the bottom part here should actually touch the bottom part of the holder. Um, some I think if the tube uh, um, is too short and if uh, the lid kind of blocks it here so that it's kind of hanging in the air, so um, this would be dangerous because maybe uh, um, I guess maybe um, the it could break this part here. Um, I'm just saying this once I <laughs> in the lab I used an ultra centrifuge and I 
um, yeah, went up too high with the rotation by a factor of 10 and just jumped the decimal place and actually the bottom part popped open yeah and uh, it spilled out yeah um, so yeah so um, that's basically it uh, and now I'm going to take this uh, sample and I'm going to put it again under the microscope hoping uh, that we're able to see something interesting but honestly when I tried this before it was not interesting at all uh, but I still want to show it to you so I have got a small amount here I put it on the microscope slide uh, you have not seen this now okay and the uh, cover glass goes on top and uh, then again under the microscope let me switch so here we go and then that's what we see it might not be in focus yeah. and those little lines and I might be some kind of dirt um, yeah, on the microscope slide but actually those in patches here are more important and rather more interesting are those little particles that you see here ah there are some cells that are still able to move yeah. but what I think what I'm able to see here are probably mostly cellular debris and bacteria yeah. and they are so small that they stayed resuspended in the liquid yeah. Yeah. so um, that is the th that's the thing so I just want yeah so I'm have to go up I'm going to go up to 60 times now so you see there are plenty so these are most likely mostly bacteria yeah. so and these bacteria are um, essentially too small um, to actually settle down on their own because of Brownian motion and probably all the you know, the motion that they have on their own kind of keeps it keeps them resuspended occasionally there are some lar larger cells here that move yeah but what we have here are basically I'm quite sure mostly bacteria So this is a yeah simply a uh, for me nevertheless um, insofar interesting in that uh, apparently the 4000 rpm that we have here is high enough in speed that we're also able to uh, separate the bacteria out of solution. Yeah. A little bit some green stuff here, some algae maybe, some whatever yeah, but mostly bacteria. If you want, we can have a look at this also on the phase contrast. Um, which is actually the preferred contrasting technique uh, for bacteria yeah, and you see those tiny little dots that you see yeah? most likely bacteria yeah? and some some other things that are floating around some of them yeah yeah, yeah so that's basically simply this one water sample that I just wanted to show you yeah and uh, yeah I'm, I'm going to now also show you uh, yeah another one here uh, which uh, and I think I might actually put both of them now under uh, yeah I might spin both of them now so that I don't have to do this two times and uh, then we're gonna see how they look like and these are basically my last two samples and I hope that they're a little bit more interesting obviously because uh, they now indeed do contain some some algae okay so uh, let's uh, try this again um, I'm going to rinse the pipette And uh, again, the wide angle view. And I use this as a, as a holder. And uh, I'm going to simply take now uh, some of the things here. And I'm also going to start filling this up. think should be enough okay so I go Terra so it's 0, 0.00 put that in take another tube here with the second sample which is this one over here And then I'm going to spin both of them together, simply to save a little bit of time. 
but actually just realized I could have done the following. I could have uh, prepared all of the tubes at the same time and spun all of them together at the same time. This would have been, of course, the more time efficient method. So, okay, here we go. So, and uh, let's uh, give it another try. Let me wipe off the drop here. Okay. Um, the question was now, do ciliates survive the process? Um, I would say it dep probably depends on the ciliate and the size of the ciliate. Um, in the, just in the specimen that I just showed you, you could see a few larger cells. Some of them could have been ciliates, which did survive. Um, but um, it depends also on the speed. Again, don't spin it too quickly. Um, because the forces could be very high. So, uh, but I would say that uh, considering the fact that some ciliates are able to survive the weight of the cover glass uh, and uh, um, of the surface tension, which kind of presses them quite flat, but then when you remove the cover glass, then they're back uh, to normal shape. Considering the fact that they're able to withstand such a high stress, m maybe they're also able to withstand this here, right? So, but uh, yeah, we'll see, okay? So I'm going to spin it up again. So, uh, so I'm just reading the, the comments again. Maybe I move a little bit away from the centrifuge so that you're able to hear me better. Um, is there uh, are any pros and cons of using the small tubes? I don't see um, uh, big advantages or disadvantages. Maybe the bigger tubes do have the advantage because you're able to uh, put in uh, way more sample material. This means that you're probably able to get a pellet even uh, with less concentrated specimens. Um, so the pellet can be quite small. Um, with 15 milliliters, the pellet can be quite small. So maybe the pellet, if you use uh, the small tubes, might be extremely small. Yeah, so yeah. Otherwise, I don't see a huge difference uh, difference here. Yeah? Um, yeah. So I mean, with a centrifuge, 1.5 to 2 millimeter tube, since only a little quantity is needed anyway. Um, yeah. You you try it out. Um, it depends very much on the amount of uh, the the concentration of the original. If the original is very dilute then I can imagine that maybe with a small tube you're not able to get enough pellet. Okay? Um, but otherwise um, I don't see um, per se um, a huge disadvantage with the ex exception maybe that those centrifuges for the small tubes can be quite expensive. Yeah, so, um, because they're made for, yeah, for also for DNA separation and so on. Yeah? So, uh, I'm relieved that apparently the live stream was not interrupted so far. So just a couple of more minutes. By the way, um, you've not seen it maybe, but the centrifuge has suction knobs, um, rubber suction feet so that it doesn't move away uh, so easily. Yeah? But you still have to be a bit careful. Okay, here we got a nice pellet and here we also got a nice pellet. I'm happy. Okay, so you able, I don't know if you're able to see this. It's this green yeah, pellet here, right? This green and uh, over here on the other one yeah, um, um, as well, a little smaller. Look, there is a, a small pellet here as well. Uh, ah, it's going off. It's coming off. I have to be careful. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm carefully trying to remove uh, the liquid again here because this pellet is already starting to dissolve. So. And... OK. 
Okay, careful, I don't want to suck it away. Okay, there's still a little bit of water in here that can be removed. You want to have a small amount left. I think that's going to be fine. So, and you tap again and resuspend. Okay. So, that's okay. And uh, I need a new microscope slide. Wherever I put them, here they are. And uh, let's wipe everything here. And uh, yeah, here is the pipette. And a small amount on here. This goes here. Cover glass goes on top. And uh, I'm going to switch back to the microscope view. Yeah, that's the previous one. And now let's try this here. Oh yeah, I still have the phase contrast ring in here, so I'm getting a dark field field image. It's too bright. Yeah, there is some. It looks a little bit bigger. And uh, what do we have here? It does look green, so there must be some algae here as well. Yes. And we can see some moving cells as well. Some of them might be ciliates or flagellates. Yeah. So these are basically uh, the cells that were suspended in the water. Lots of, uh, you know, of algae as well. So maybe we can go up to 40 times. Yeah. So here we go. go. Those small dots in the background, again, might be many bacteria. Yeah. But I'm not seeing so many diatoms here. I was kind of hoping to see some diatoms. And uh, well, let's go up 60 times because it's so fun. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Can you estimate the RPM of the last case? Well, the last, um, yeah, I turned it up all the way to the maximum and uh, the centrifuge says that it's able to spin 4,000 rotations per minute. So I assume, um, I assume that it was uh, around 4,000 RPM. Okay, let me see. Yeah, so you see that there are, yeah, not only algae, but uh, obviously um, also other uh, protists uh, who have survived this process. Ah, yeah, I do see some diatom shells here now as well. Yeah. Interesting, okay. And basically by doing that you can try to hope to find something interesting. Yeah. So, so there's a comment, this sample is much better, it's more interesting. That's what I basically also want, that's also one of the reasons why I still showed you the other one, the, the boring one, because on the outside, just by looking at it, you're not able to really, of course, you're not able to really uh, see if it's what you're going to find. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. even when the water looks similar um, towards the, yeah, initially, it can be quite, quite different. So uh, plenty of uh, plenty of diatom shells present as well. Huh? Yeah. So that's basically uh, yeah. And and while while I'm watching this, I'm just going to do the following. I'm going to then take the second uh, sample here, okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to carefully remove. I'm going to carefully remove the so-called supernatant as it's called and uh, and I'm also going to put that under the microscope okay yeah just so that you <laughs> you're able to see what I'm doing and um, so this is this one here has a huge uh, huge pellet so there was lots of suspended material in here. So here we go. Could these uh, gr these green round uh, pieces be pollen 
Almost certainly not. Okay, so the question is, is um, if uh, those round structures that you see here are pollen. The reason why I do not think that they are pollen, they might look similar maybe in size and, and, and in appearance, is, is because uh, pollen generally, uh, at least to my knowledge, they do not do photosynthesis. And uh, these are, they are green, right? And uh, the, um, the, con the high, extremely high concentration of those in the water would be a little bit unusual for pollen as well. Yeah? The size might be similar, some of them might look like pollen, but actually I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure they're, they're, they're algae. Yeah? Single-celled uh, single algae. So, so here we go, and uh, yeah, another slide, and uh, so let's take again another sample here. This one seems to be also quite uh, quite concentrated and dense. So let's. Uh, Put another cover glass on top. I'm not showing you this now because you already know how this works. <laughs> you can just you're just looking now at the microscope view. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to remove a little bit some of the excess liquid again. So, and now I'm going to uh, put the second uh, water sample under the microscope. Okay. And uh, I, I always go down a little bit with the magnification. And let's see what we're able to find here. Uh, again, different. But here there seem to be more diatoms again. So let's go up. Oh! Ha! It survived! <laughs> it's a rotifer. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, um, answers uh, the question, are they able to survive? Well, at least this rotifer apparently was able to f survive 1700 G's <laughs> and 4000 RPMs. <laughs> okay. So let's go up a little bit with the in light. Yeah. So yeah, it's actually also a little bit not quite anticipated. Yeah. Yep. Ah, here at the next to it, this uh, oval-shaped structure that's a diatom. Yeah. yeah it seems to be it seems to be quite happy yeah. having. Yeah undergone that. What, what else do we have here? I don't know. Lots of unidentified filamentous algae maybe. Diatoms, plenty of diatoms. And here's another diatom. There are more. Uh, these diatoms seem to be uh, alive because they're still green. Um, the diatoms in the other sample were essentially empty shells. Yeah. Topic suggestion. Compare liquid surgical antibacterial grade soap with regular liquid hand washing soap shampoo. Ah, so basically you want me to mix uh, some different uh, disinfectant soaps and, and so on with uh, microorganisms to see uh, how they respond. That's an interesting one. Uh, in this case I have to prepare a more or less concentrated uh, sa um, uh, sample of maybe let's say, let's say uh, paramecia or other ciliates that are relatively easy to observe. Okay. Um, some asked about the use of tint. Oh gosh, sorry, I do not understand that. What do you mean with tint? T-I-N-T. -T. So some asked about the use of tint. Would you use it with a centrifuge? Well, sorry, I do not understand the question because I do not know what you mean with tint. Okay, so if you could clarify. Yeah? <laughs> if the rod forgot busy, <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, Actually, I'm going to give you. I'm, I'm going to give you a biological answer here <laughs> to that. Uh, oh, this, this seem, these are these are cyanobacteria here. This long thing here, it's not a worm. It's, these are cyanobacteria. And I think the rotifer did not get dizzy because it did, does not have uh, the same sense of, of balance as we humans have. Because we humans, in our ear, we have uh, yeah, in the inner ear, we have uh, um, our sense of balance, uh, and uh, this is. Uh, there's a liquid that is rotating when we go in a circle then it kind of pushes against uh, you know, the sensor here and this causes us uh, to become dizzy but rotifers don't have that so I claim that rotifers cannot become dizzy <laughs> but that would be interesting uh, to find out yeah this long thing uh, that you see here the vertical thing here that is um, uh, these are cyanobacteria 
these are actually individual cells but they're um, very close together and I consider this a little bit quite fascinating because this is actually um, yeah, an example. This is basically cyanobacteria being bacteria. They're actually single celled, but there's so many of them together, like, and it almost creates the impression of, of being a yeah one complete uh, new yeah multicellular uh, organism. Yeah, so uh, this is basically one of those examples where um, essentially uh, also a very basic uh, first step towards multicellularity can be observed, even though they are bacteria. Yeah. Have you ever worked with an electric microscope before? I think what you mean is to say is not electric microscope but uh, electron microscope. And uh, the unfortunate answer is, is no, I have not worked with an electron microscope before. The reason is because they wouldn't let me. Why not? <laughs> when, while I was at the university you had to actually go to special training courses um, and they wouldn't uh, let you use them otherwise and these days often it's like this that um, the electron microscopes are so specialized that if you're a researcher you actually yourself do not work with them but there are actually specially trained people there that you give the sample and they will do the microscopy for you so basically you give them a sample and then uh, they will send you a picture um, of whatever sample you sent them the reason is, is if uh, you make a mistake with I mean I heard that uh, you, if you do something wrong well then the repair costs can be quite high um, and for this reason you need specialized training for that and uh, they would not let students uh, otherwise uh, go near it, the electron microscope yeah so um, yeah um, I don't remember what sample I was looking at yeah what I've done is is very briefly these are water samples that I've uh, used and what I've done is is um, uh, these are just pond water samples and uh, I've seen that some of the pond water samples they collected some solid algae down here but sometimes the pond water itself was a little bit turbid and cloudy and every time when something is cloudy then this actually means that there are some suspended particles in there and those suspended particles uh, actually mean that uh, it's solid and then you can centrifuge it off yeah? and that's basically what I wanted to, uh, to try here yeah? uh, it's using any color tint useful in this case but I don't remember what sample it was for um, okay you can essentially well hmm yeah it is of course possible to use color filters uh, for uh, for microscopy um, however what I some generally suggest is um, yeah uh, you, you can get many you can let's put it this way something that's a little bit underrated is is um, if you take a picture under the microscope and then if you increase the and improve the contrast using um, yeah, picture image editing programs then I think this looks even uh, looks very good so you don't need any fancy equipment or color filters simply taking a picture and then increasing and improving the contrast uh, using Photoshop or um, other uh, yeah, image editing programs really can add a lot yeah um, I myself uh, of course have the possibility as well to, to change the color around a little bit okay um, but that's uh, it's also sometimes or, or often not, not necessary yeah? So let's go down a little bit with the magnification again. And sometimes it's good to also um, you have the natural colors visible. Well, okay, two, Rotterf two Rotterfers survived. <laughs> okay, yeah. Two Rotterfers survived. Let's go down here again here. Yeah, so I'm able to change the, yeah. yeah because I've got polarized light and, and special yeah, type of optics. That's why I'm able to do these color changes here. Okay, uh, yeah, again, cyanobacteria here. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Ha, ah, look, I silly it. <laughs> here, here, here we go. Yep. Okay, uh, it also survived the whole treatment process. Yeah. Yep. The, the cilia that th these guys have um, act like little feet and uh, yeah they look a little bit like tiny little feet but these are actually cilia yeah. so um, yeah I think after the shock that I had at the beginning of this uh, live stream when all of a sudden the first uh, the first uh, live stream got interrupted uh, I'm kind of happy that uh, it seemed to run stable now okay would you use a stains in solutions with a centrifuge is now a question and I have to tell you um, 
Look, there is a, it, it depends what you want to do, but there is always a problem, one basic problem with stains. And this basic problem is, is that stains are chemical substances that in most cases will actually harm uh, the specimen. Um, yeah, so they're poisonous for them. So um, if you want to see live uh, organisms that are moving around, um, then you, have, you can use some stains, it's called live staining, but you have to be very careful that you do not use too much of it because in many cases it actually kills the organisms. So live staining is a delicate process. Um, what some people have been doing um, is, is they have taken yeast cells and have stained them. Um, I don't know which stain they now used, uh, but they actually made the yeast cells quite red. They stained the yeast cells and then they used the yeast cells as food for uh, uh, the microorganisms like ciliates and, and, and even water fleas and so on. And they have then eaten those stained yeast cells and then you could actually see the digestive system of uh, um, those uh, yeah, tiny uh, yeah, water fleas better or you could actually see how the yeast cells were taken up into a food vacuole uh, by the paramecia, by the ciliates and so on. So it was uh, some kind of like an indirect uh, staining that you did not stain the, the, them directly but actually the food that they've eaten. Right? Um, so this is a, a, a possibility to kind of make sure that, that the stain does not directly kill the, the objects that you want to, to look at. Okay? Um, yeah, so otherwise I would say, um, yeah, um, it depends really what you want to look at. And I generally feel that uh, if you want to observe um, you know, nature, water samples, whatever, in, 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 yeah, normally, then in most cases it's not necessary to stain. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, because some of the stains contain alcohol, for example, and this is a problem already. Yeah, and uh, the, one of the things that kind of makes uh, water samples so interesting also is, is the movement that you see. And uh, so I, I would say that uh, in most cases, I would say probably staining is not necessary. But uh, then again, I mean, uh, we're here to experiment around and to try things out. Okay. Yeah. So uh, did those people use carmine? That could be it. Carmine. Carmine is a very red stain. It's also a food coloring. Um, I've used carmine myself as well. So maybe indeed it was carmine that they used to stain the, the, the yeast cells. Something again to try out. I've got actually some carmine and did not try staining yet. Um, but that's something that yeah, maybe maybe the topic for another live stream. Yeah, here, here are the diatoms again. Okay. Okay, people, you know what? Um, I think I'm going to call it a day again today. <laughs> Okay, hope that it was interesting for you. I mean, yeah, if you um, are interested in in those uh, centrifuge videos, I did actually make a, uh, in my other channel um, uh, called Microbe Hunter Microscopy. I remember I did once make a review of the centrifuge that I'm using here. And I did also make a couple of uh, centrifuge videos uh, also before in this channel. So I would like to invite you if you're interested, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sponsored. But, uh, I wasn't. This wasn't sponsored or anything. And I'm not uh, recommending this centrifuge, or I'm not even unrecommending it. I'm just uh, saying that's the one that I'm using. I'm sure there are better ones and worse ones around. Uh, I can only say that it does its job. Um, yeah. Um, but I probably would not leave it unattended because, uh, yeah, you 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 have, it might start to vibrate a little bit if if uh, yeah if it's not fully balanced. Okay. Okay, people, uh, I'm going to uh, again call it a day today. Hope you liked it. I uh, uh, hope that you found this live stream here um, after I had to interrupt the first part. Um, and I wish you all the best and uh, I hope that it works better next week. Okay, and by, that, by next week I'll also have figured out the whole problem with the camera system. And I think I have a suspicion of what the problem is because I accidentally turned on the lamp each uh, of these... Uh, the camera has a, has a tiny LED lamp and as, as soon as I turned it on, immediately the, 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 the camera was interrupted and I think this has to do something with the power supply. Maybe um, the USB port uh, is not able to provide enough power. So I have plenty of things to experiment around with, but having six cameras connected to the computer um, is exerting quite a stress on the computer as well. Okay. Um, no, um, there's a last question. Oh, he has a live stream tomorrow. No, tomorrow I don't have a live stream. Okay, um, I think this must have been some kind of a misunderstanding. 
Um, so I usually do the live streams uh, on a Saturday. Um, if I, for whatever reason, do not have a time to do them on Saturday, please check the community posts. I will actually uh, uh, post a message. Uh, it could be that uh, for whatever reason, I'm, I don't have time uh, to do a live stream. And in this case, uh, I will uh, post, uh, post something and I might uh, move it maybe for a few days or so. Okay, but enough for today. All the best. Uh, see you around next time. And uh, yeah, happy microbe hunting. Bye-bye.